All right, and we're back, everyone. That was a really, really exciting match. Congrats again to David on winning that tile for the red team. Uh, and now we have another match between red team and purple team. This is T Flame, the team captain, versus Opie Rights. Uh, T Flame was just casting with us, but he has to go play the match now. So we're going to have Paratroopa joining us for this match. Hey, everybody. That last match was really exciting, and I think that this match is going to be a barn burner as well. Yeah, I think so too. Opie Wright's definitely is always going to be the favorite in almost any set he plays, but T-Flame has had a lot of competitive wins uh, over the past few months, and he's definitely someone who's punched above his level. Over in the PAX Invitational last fall, T-Flame got wins against Yeesh and Yurand, who are two players who are considered to be about on the same level as Opie. That's right. T-Flame has shown definitely that he can play with the elites in this game. So I, I really don't think that Opie is all that strong a favorite. Yeah, and so this is K2. If we take a oh, look over at the, um, at the grid, K2 is another pretty important tile. Uh, that's not necessarily the reason Opie is on it. Opie is on this tile because Opie loves ballroom. But it's a pretty important tile for both teams, I would say. Purple team already has two adjacent tiles. Um, it's the higher, it's the one that's flashing, but it's the one on on top. Uh, so team purple, for which is what Opie is playing for, already has two adjacent tiles there. But red has a pretty big chunk of tiles in the general vicinity. So it's a relatively important tile for either team. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be very, very tightly contested. Yeah, Opie Wrights is an expert at Ballroom, and Ballroom is what we are starting with. And T-Flame, who definitely does not random his spy selection, is starting off the first game with Smallman. That's a statement. Uh, we could pull out a book here, but we had to finish that drink, so I really don't think it's going to be quick enough to pull a fast one on Opie. So I don't know if we can do a whole lot with this. I mean, look uh, the, at the cover. We can barely cover, be seen at the shelf. Opie's taking a good angle on this, though. It would have been seen. I think T-Flame was right not to take it. I think if he took the microfilm at the start of the book reading animation, yeah, he might have gotten was, away with it. Yeah, if it was right away, it might have worked. Little and then look a, at that. Hmm. T-Flame was sort of oh, chasing oh, oh. after the ambassador, but when the ambassador landed at the bookshelf, T-Flame just changed his mind, landed on this painting pad, and is very excited to be getting a first flirt. 51% with the ST coming to you. Doing some victory shakes there for that green flirt with the ST coming right to us at the window, or painting. I mean, look, it's always nice when the ST comes to you, but you're a minute into this game and all you have is one flirt. So, like, it's exciting, but, like, it's just a flirt. Everyone gets flirts pretty easily. What What are you going to do next, T-Flame? Eh, I mean, you can run out of time on flirts in Ballroom really quickly, so I, I think that that really helped us catch up to our pacing here. We're going to be able to get this flirt done a lot easier now. Probably step in for a contact here. Uh, this is shaping up pretty well. The DA is in here with like six different people, five people. Banana bread. Yeah, and look at the angle that Opie has during this contact. He has he doesn't have the wide angle, he has the long angle, so it's kind of hard to see who is or wasn't in conversation. Uh, and as a result, looks like Opie only gets one, two lowlights, two lowlights from that banana bread. Yeah, we did a little bit of split out of that conversation, but I don't think that if Opie saw Smallman walking away, he either knew or he just didn't see him walk away at all, so I don't know. Yeah, I think we're staying pretty under the radar so far. I don't think there's any reason for us to be a suspect. But now there's only no. 90 seconds left, and we haven't got any more flirt progress. So I being at only 51% isn't great. I was a little bit surprised that we didn't step in with our seduction target right after that contact to uh, try to finish that off. It might have been a little bit aggressive to do that after the contact, but I think that we really don't have time. Because now the ST has got a briefcase. Who knows where he's going to go next? Yeah, it doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of opportunities to flirt. The ST is on the move across the venue again. Oh, bookcase, but there's a lot of space between free. Sorry and the ST. So being three at bookcase is all right here. We do get a little bit too close to the twin. Hopefully, OP doesn't think it's a huge problem. He won't. What he might think is a problem is the fact that we've been to blue bookcase before, and I suspect that OP may have thought, and there's the highlight, OP might suspect, maybe not a microfilm, I'm not sure. 
There was that time where Smallman was not visible at blue, so it's possible that Opie knows that Smallman could have done the microfilm. Being yes. at green, taking out the book here, it looks like Opie's going to be keeping an eye on us for the rest of this game, which is going to make getting away with a bug very hard here, even though we are next to the ambassador. We're going to need to do a time out here. We don't have a choice. The ST just went to statues, and we don't have a way to get three missions done right now with this book in hand. No, uh, it's either going to be a timeout or a time ad. Oh, we do oh, take the bug. bug while Opie is looking at Orange Sorry over at Statues. If we actually dumped this book and got a flirt, we could finish. But no, there's six seconds left. We're still no, not going to be able to. We have to do a time ad over here at the window and then immediately duck into the bookcase and hope that it isn't yeah. seen, but it is. I think we needed to do that flirt after the contact, and that might have given us a little bit more time to... Uh, find a way to get two missions done or at, at the very least we needed to put that book back and not take it out i don't think that there was a lot of value in taking that book out uh we, we'd spent too much time idling up to that point anyway so any further uh lack of suspicion that we might have got was was kind of um diminished by the fact that we were at blue books anyway so i, I do think, think was, getting yeah. that bug was quite impressive I don't that know if Keeplin did this on purpose. Maybe he did, but sorry being at statues there at like 20 seconds left. That's something that Opie is going to be looking at, maybe checking for swaps from her. So it's a good time to go for a bug. And if we just had, you know, maybe another 10, 15 seconds, we could have found a way to turn it into a win. But Opie is a very dominant sniper. So you generally don't expect to win your spy games against him. So. No, I think that game was winnable, um, but it, I think T-Flame just did one too many kind of idly actions on Ballroom, and those can really catch up to you on the time. You don't have a lot of time to do stuff. Yeah, so Opie going to be spying now, playing as Pearls. Entering here next to Kane, the circles on the floor are not touching, so we're not at that close of a distance, but we hit exactly 49% on the flirt, which means that with another green flirt at a slightly closer distance, we could finish it off. Yeah, we could get a green flirt here, but we're going to have to either leave conversation or twitch a little bit closer to Kane, which you could do right now because T-Flame is zooming in on Sorry super hard. Uh... Probably possibly guarding bug there. Thought General might have done a bug. We might have to watch General in the future. Well, it's a good thing we didn't wait for that timer flirt because Kane leaves the conversation immediately afterwards. And Opie is just doing a green, green time out here at the front window. Yeah, there really wasn't anyone else at windows. So T Flame is. Uh, T Flame had a lot to think about, though. So I'm not sure if Time Ad was on his mind at the moment. No, and I think the best time to get away with a time ad is just kind of randomly in the middle mm -hmm. of the game. The sniper's not always going to be watching for it. They have other things on their mind. Uh, and with another green flirt, there we go. It's done in just two flirts, and <laughs> we have two minutes right and 50 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, we've got a lot of time to do missions now, and I don't know if T-Flame... I haven't really seen a reaction from him on this time ad, so either he caught it too late to do anything about it, or he just hasn't noticed at all. No, and it looks like the ambassador is just constantly even putting himself in dangerous positions. Mm -hmm. So T Flame yeah. is just zoomed in on that at the moment. The party has been pretty active. I think it should be somewhat easy, or at least easier than normal, for Opie to get away with things here. Yeah, we could possibly take this green book out. And I don't know if T Flame would have the capacity to remember it. Uh, the party has slowed down a little bit, though, so I'm not sure about that anymore. Got some frustrated shakes from T Flame here. Possibly. Oh, we're walking by the ambassador Amba, and we're going to do the wrong arm bug. Yeah. T-Flame did not have the angle for it, but he can certainly notice that Pearls was taking that bug path. It's just going to be a question of does he credit Pearls with the bug or not? Pearls was not high lit after that, so I suspect that Opie may have gotten away with that clean. Uh, I don't know how much T-Flame suspects. He was looking at the Amba, but he may have not thought that Pearls could have done a bug there. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is one of the advantages of playing as Pearl. She has a very low walking speed, mm -hmm. so she's behind the ambassador for the whole time that she's bugging. There's less of an opportunity to see her arm coming out. Now, if you want to guard against that, you have to rotate your laser over to a different angle. Red test Pearloin coming off from Opie, though. Oh, there we go. You threw it away. You had that after the bug. But a red Pearloin, that's going to get you shot. I think the T-Flame may have had at least a little bit of suspicion on Pearl's there. We were zoomed in pretty hard on that Pearloin. Even though after the bug, uh, there was no highlight, we were watching Pearls' path there, so I suspect that Pearls was a threat in T-Flame's mind. Uh, I was on sniper view, and the bug was completely invisible, but you just have to credit that path anyway. So really nice job on T-Flame there to catch up, even with that red Pearlane, which is unfortunate. 
uh, Tiefling was able to catch up to not for certain seeing that bug and having some other bug possibilities. Ambo is really hard to guard in that. Yeah, so the score is 1-1. One, one. They've both won their sniper games. Both spies seemingly struggling to find a path to four missions against snipers this strong. T-Flame is going to be playing Smallman again. You know, I think he played Smallman twice in a row in his set versus Scout, was it? Uh, on Tayen as well. He seems to really be leaning into the Smallman these days. What do you think the odds that he's just going to play Smallman every game? <laughs> do you think he'd do it? He'd do it? I think, I think he would he do it. Do I don't think there's it. any reason he wouldn't. If he feels that it could strategically work, yeah, he would He would go for it. Yeah. Once again, we got the Amba in a very dangerous position right now, so Opie really has to guard uh, this conversation here. But everyone's kind of leaving now, so it's a little bit easier now. Yeah, if a few more people enter that conversation, there would be a lot of cover to get away with a bug. We're on the move, but we don't go close enough to the Ambassador, so Tief, uh, so Opie shouldn't have any suspicion of Smallman for bug here. No, I don't think so. Uh, we could get our flirt done here. If we get a green, we do not. We hit a white, we go up to 85%. But we still have decent pacing here with the partial inspects and flirt mostly done with almost uh, a little bit more than two minutes left. Yeah, I'm kind of waiting to see where we go with this because it's kind of similar to the last game where we got a bunch of soft tail progress. Ooh, that's the unfortunate. The, the SDA left uh, as that white BB was coming off, so that's going to be a little bit better for Opie. Although Opie could suspect the other conversation for having that SDA in it, but uh, there are only like three reels, three or four. Yeah, and I wonder, as Smallman, one of your potential avenues to victory, if the conversation in back fills up, it's completely empty right now, but if it fills up, you can go into the back statues without being seen. Mm -hmm. But uh, T-Flame just going to be going for the fingerprint here. It's a long journey to return to the Ambassador. We're covered for a lot of it, but it's mm -hmm. definitely noticed now that we have this briefcase. So we have a lot of soft tell progress. 90 seconds left. It's doable, but are we going to deviate from the soft tells at some point? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, aside from this green book that Ampa's about to put away, I don't know if there are any other fingerprints on the venue right now. The Ampa really hasn't been touching stuff. So that's going to be hard to finish fingerprints. Whoa, are we going for this briefcase again? Well, <laughs> and tapped. The double agent uh, beats us to it, so we cancel ooh, away. Uh, but Obi hates Salmon right now. Salmon is getting that print, and we got safety off on Salmon. Oh, that's really good. We get a highlight yeah. on T-Flame now as we're doing the inspects. Mm -hmm. The print at green is completely smudged, but the ambassador is leaving another one over there on the statues. So the question is going to be less, are we a suspect? It's going to be more, is Salmon enough of a suspect that Opie is going to hold on anyone else waiting to see what Salmon does next? I can't remember if Salmon has real BB, but I know that Salmon has center statues, and pos I don't remember if he has fingerprint done, but he's going back to this green bookcase, which is not suspicious. I think that Salmon's mm -hmm. no longer a credible threat. And I OB's agree. Mind. And does T-Flame want to finish with fingerprints? We're going for a swap instead. We're swapping swap. with Taft blocking it for us. Irish moves over to block it as well, but I think Opie can get a good view on it, but it doesn't. It's oh, it's a green swap. Yeah, it's green, so it doesn't matter. We could go to this left statue on the other side and get a fingerprint there. But, oh, uh, did we, were we even on that pad with pearls? I don't think I we don't were. Know. Salmon's uh -oh. gonna swap it though. Uh, I don't know, no. Opie thinks that it's Tiefling. Yeah. No, it wasn't enough. That's really sad though. Oh. If Salmon hadn't done that green bookcase and lowered his suspicion level. Yeah, if Salmon had gone for that, then it might have worked. It was a little bit too late though too. Um, I don't know if, I don't even know if Salmon got that off, like, before zero, zero, 0 hit. No, I mean, I, well, he must have gotten it before, actually, no, I don't know. There were some overtime beeps, but. Well, well, yeah, because the swap came off. But, right, uh, yeah. I can't, I can't remember what the timer was at when Salmon got there. So the um, no, there was definitely a mission obvious. win pending for a few seconds. So that means that uh, Opie would have known that Salmon could not be doing a white swap there. Maybe if it happened earlier, it would have gone differently, but it feels at that point that the balance of suspicion had changed and that Smallman was kind of the top suspect. I agree with that. Yeah, that, that seemed more like Salmon or Smallman doing a green swap there than it seemed like Salmon doing something. 
All right. Well, that's three sniper wins in a row. The spies have all been trying things and yeah. they've played games that, you know, under some slightly different circumstances could have resulted in wins, but no spy has gotten away with it just yet. Opie playing his ponytail now. We're going to enter and get that first flirt for 22%. We're nowhere near Kane in this combo. Yeah, I mean, it's still partial progress. So we're going to take a green purloin here, though, right at the start. Okay, well, now you're just testing your sniper. If T-Flame was watching Toby, Ooh. the reject should be pretty noticeable. Another reject, though, from Kane, our ST. And now an SDA is going to be the one taking... No, the SDA rejects as well. Opie's happy. T-Flame is onto this. T-Flame is keeping Toby's tray on screen completely. Yeah, now we're going to see the reaction here. The fade is visible. I think O-Twin gets highlight, though, so we're not sure. Yes, T-Flame yes. highlights the entire chain. He was onto it. Well done. That was a, that was a really tricky purloin, and I think that Opie was pretty happy about it. We saw some nods, but I think that T-Flame has a pretty good chance to win this game now. Yeah, I think so as well. The fact that T-Flame was able to very efficiently take those three highlights tells me that he was completely onto it. The best possibility for Opie now is if Kane goes off to center statues or something like that. But if not, it's going to be hard for Opie to finish. Yeah, I do think that there is a possibility that Kane is slightly more suspicious. He did leave very quickly after that green purlane would have happened. But there is a possibility that we are not as suspicious as Kane is. I don't know for sure. Yeah, and I definitely don't think that T-Flame thinks the twin did it. The fade no. certainly looked a little bit ambiguous, but T-Flame yes. knows there was a chain going, and also mm -hmm. Ponytail and Kane are now back together in conversation, so you've got to suspect that that's a flirt pair. You just don't know initiated it. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I And I, I'm not worried about the fact that T-Flame didn't take uh, low lights here either. I'm pretty sure that T-Flame is going to have uh, Ponytail and Kane as his two top suspects right now. Ooh, and we're, and going now we're the one statues. going to center statues. To me, that indicates that Opie thinks he's less of a suspect than he is. Because if you know you're a suspect, you wait as long as possible for Kane to do things before oh, yeah. you yeah. go do things. But yeah, Opie thought he got away with it. T-Flame was on top of the whole chain and takes a pretty confident shot. You know, that might be why T-Flame didn't go and low light the whole party. Because uh, Opie may have thought that the sniper didn't react to the purloin. And it was a pretty good green purloin too. So there's a reason to think that you might have gotten away with it considering the timing in the chain, but uh, mm. T-Flame was all over it and going to center statues, that's that's no bueno. Yeah, I mean, Spy Party is a hard game and there's a lot going on at the start of any given mm. game. It's not uncommon for snipers to just forget about Toby for a few seconds at the start and then the list is gone and they have no idea who did it. So it's good time of chaos discipline from T-Flame to be on top of that. Very. So we've seen some really... Uh, I, I think some pretty tricky shots from the sniper up to this point. Like the spies have given, ha, have, you know, forced the sniper to actually play well so far, is what I'll say. Yeah, especially when you consider that Opie was nearly wanting to shoot a civilian uh, in mm -hmm. Salmon in that other game, and he managed to hold. T Flame going to be spying here now as Ponytail. We're just staying AI controlled AI this control? time. Also worth noting, okay. we are not small men. We take off air control to do a talk, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, we're not Smallman. Smallman is at the party, though, and he's not an STA. Well, this conversation is looking really good. It's got a seduction mm. target and a double agent. And if you look uh -huh. at the other combo with the SDA, it's got a few people as well. Makes this a pretty banana good bread. time to fire off a banana bread. But no, the double agent leaves ah, during the white brutal. animation. That's awful. And unfortunately, Smallman wasn't in that conversation either, so he doesn't have real. That's too bad. But yeah, uh, the fact like that we didn't Opie get this contact. Two low lights, so it's not yeah. the worst scenario, but it's pretty bad. It's not great on Ballroom to lose two low lights early when you don't even, when you still have to do another contact. No, it, but I'm looking at all of these, um, looking at all of these highlights though, that could be, that could be good for T-Flame. It looks like highlights were taken for, is that for real BB? I'm not sure. It is, it is. I right after is. the banana bread came yeah. off, um, Twin and Sari were the ones with the suspected double agent, and they they got a highlight for it. Yeah, so that could, could possibly pay off. Got two minutes left, though. We have very little progress. We may need to do another contact, which may lose heat for some of those people. 
Yeah, if you did the contact right now, you would be losing Teal, King, and Sam, and Smallman. Yeah. And T-Flame's going for it, and all of those people, all of those people are going to be lost. The party is very, very narrowed down now, unfortunately. Yeah, we still got Pearls in there, who was in with Real again, um, possibly. Uh, but yeah, now there aren't a lot of suspects of this party anymore. And we yeah, don't and the people who picked progress. up the highlights earlier, it was Sari and one of the twins. Sari's back down to a neutral now because the second DB wouldn't really make sense for her in that scenario. No. T-Flame going to be going in to get a fingerprintable book here over at over at Green, and that's kind of the first major mission progress we've had in quite a while. Yeah, we, we don't read this. Th that was a hard tell in that read, but we had to get rid of that book soon because we don't have a lot of time to waste. So we just have to hope that Opie didn't see our cycles there. We're going to try yeah, to finish print, this first green. That print Oops. was not fresh. It was left there over a minute ago. But oh boy, just entering conversation mm. and talking gets us the highlight. Yeah, Opie may be onto this print after all anyway. And that that enter conversation talk quickly. We didn't even get the flirt done. I think that T-Flame's really in trouble here. We're definitely the top suspect right now. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a way to finish either way. We're going in. We're getting one inspect one inspect over here at this statue uh if we want to finish we're going to need another inspect and another print the ambassador was leaving some of the statues here, here. No. opie's on top of it yeah i don't know if you're a shop for inspects or fingerprint or a combination of both but that was that was just too much with nobody else at the party was really doing anything at that time so there wasn't really a lot of opportunities for chief lane there yeah, that's an issue when you narrow down the party that much by letting off so many lowlights for BB. It just makes it that much easier for the sniper to track everything you're doing. That print was on green for quite a while, so if OP was on top of it, it's still a good catch. But going statue to statue and getting a print on the second one, it just screams that you're the spy. Now right. Opie going to be playing as Red Dress here. Opie is known for doing some rush games on Ballroom, and we haven't seen one from him yet. I wonder if he's going to pull it out here. No, and I'd, I'd like to see it, because I'd like to see a change of pace here on Ballroom uh, with the sniper party going on. Yeah, I, I mean, Opie tried to change of pace last time with the uh, the Purloin. Here it is, green microfilm animation. T-Flame looks like he's zooming in on it, but he's not. He's actually zooming in on Orange yeah. Sari to check what she's blinking over Checking at the statues. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think that microfilm was clean, and I think that was a good time to do it. We The cover kind of evaporated just after we did it, but we had a lot of cover for it. Uh, so it didn't look like it was visible in the sniper view. Yeah, I think this is a good start for Opie, and what he's been doing in the other games hasn't been working, so trying for some animation microfilms, there's really, really no reason not to give it a go. Mm -hmm. well, first flirt, 34%. The conversations are sort of spread out, but I think going over and joining the double agent here could set us up for a contact. I don't know if we're going to want to do it right away because it would definitely narrow it down to only a few people with real. You would like it if your conversation got one or two more, but you also yeah. can't risk waiting around too long. Well, Sari's in conversation now, so I think we could do it now. Sari has center statues, so we definitely want to leave her in. Yeah, there's a lot of people milling about. Ooh, uh, it would give off a good path. number of lowlights, but you'd have two good conversations yeah, with real. Opie decides to go for it. Yeah, we have... Two P oh, Pearls is leaving uh, during it as well, so there's not that many people with real it's, anymore. It's not too bad, because fortunately the SDA is in the other conversation, and there's a few people in that one. So, yeah. not too bad. That could have been a lot worse. It could have been, but look how many lowlights mm. there are. This party is so, so narrowed down. It's going to be really hard to get away with a second microfilm animation here. Yeah, right now there's absolutely no cover on that side of the venue. There's just no way to get a microfilm done over there right now. Yeah, and here's and... the thing. Even if you do a microfilm, you need another mission. And mm -hmm. what is it going to be? Is it going to be inspect? Because if so, you need to do the microfilm first. You don't want to do mm -hmm. a microfilm when you're a highlight for center statues. We're heading nope. over now. We're going to take out the book. If there doesn't, if more cover doesn't show up, we're going to have to walk away with it. Yeah, the, the only possible thing here is that T-Flame does have to watch the Amber right now, but he's taking an angle that well, we could do the microfilm now. The pillar is kind of blocking us. I don't know if Opie is confident in that, though. The laser's Ooh, moving the around now. In a tough yeah, spot. You have to be watching it. for a bug from Kane there. Yeah. And Opie takes that moment to go for the microfilm. Doesn't look like T-Flame saw it. Very well timed. Perfect timing. It was it was really not that visible on sniper review. T-Flame had to move the laser around to guard the amba there. Opie picked a perfect time to do that microfilm. I think that was clean. 
All Keep right. Flaming. All we need yeah. is one more flirt, and then we need to go do the center inspect. We hit yep. the flirt. We just needed 18%, and luckily we got it. This bug is being watched. I don't think we can do this. I think we have to do center inspects instead. Yeah, but there's not much time left. We're requesting a drink. We might be going for a purloin instead. This is risky. I think that T-Flame is watching this. There isn't a lot else to watch now. Ampa is not in a dangerous position any longer. We are going to do white purloin here. I think T-Flame is going to see this. T-Flame is looking at it. The list disappears, and he just takes the shot. Yep. Oh, nice that shot. was a very good spy That's game from Opie, but yeah. finishing is just hard. Yeah, that was a great, great microphone, but we just didn't have a fourth mission there. I don't know. I don't know if T Flame would have shot us if we went to Center Inspects. Center Inspects with less than 30 seconds is really suspicious. I think that T Flame still might have shot that, but I don't know. It might have worked. I think I think that would have been a better option than Perlin, personally. Yeah, there wasn't even a chain. Queen had just taken before yeah. us. So even if T Flame wasn't certain about the fade, there was only one person to shoot for that Perloin. Now he was looking at it very closely. We don't know if that's because Hare was a suspect or just because it's the end of the game and you have to yeah. watch every list take. I don't know. T Flame wasn't guarding us super hard at the green bookcase, but it's possible that he could have credited uh Red Dress for being at two bookcases anyway and so signed her some threat for that. I don't know. I'm not in T Flame's head. Yeah, but I think it was still a very well-played spy game from Opie overall. I agree. If that ending just went a bit differently. I mean, I really mm -hmm. think he could have won from center statues. I think T-Flame might have shot anyway just for going to center statues late, but it wouldn't have been a certain shot by any it, means. That would have been a very difficult shot for T-Flame. I think he might have taken it anyway, but it would have been a tough shot. And you want to make snipers take tough shots. Well, we're tied. 3-3 three, three, going Sniper into the party. second venue. Welcome to High Rise. This is High Rise 3 of 5, so it's a very different dynamic. T-Flame has chosen to have Purloin and Bug on as the two hard tells here. Yeah, I'm getting some real classic spy party here with Ballroom and High Rise. I like to see it. Those are these are two of my favorite venues. Yeah, that's true. These are two venues that, you know, used to be the beginner venues that everyone started with when they started and playing the, the game. T-Flame and Opie are players Ooh. from the newer generation, though, but Opie was a prodigy right from the start and just immediately Absolutely. shot up the ranks. Whereas T-Flame was sort of a casual player and underestimated for a while, but then he just took off massively in the past year with all of those competitive wins. That's right. Now, that was an interesting fake contact. Uh, we had the SDA in our conversation. Uh, we might have been taking a chance that there wasn't the SDA in this conversation and just giving sorry, like a suspicious real contact on the other side. But uh, ultimately, everyone in this conversation has real now, but we don't actually have real. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I mean, Opie mm -hmm. is not necessarily known for shooting civilians. But on high rise, if someone who is a suspect and someone who you've credited with a real banana bread goes to center statues, it's always possible. Yeah, we're just going and idling with this book a little bit. I, I don't mind this. Uh, it doesn't look very spy-like to take a green book out at two minutes left. It does hinder our options, though. We can no longer purloin or inspect with this book, and bug is going to be a lot harder to do. So we can do it while we're finishing our flirt here, which we're going to get done. And then we could do a contract, but we're going to have to put this green book back, and that's not going to leave us with a lot of time afterwards. No, but with 90 seconds left, you can give yourself a pretty good opportunity to bug. Mm -hmm. I like what T-Flame is doing here, just walking right up next to the ambassador, but with a book mm -hmm. in his hand, as if to sort of taunt the sniper or say, would I really do that? Would the spy really just put themselves in the forefront of your mind by standing next to the ambassador like that? Would the spy really be holding two useless objects in their hands right now? Exactly. Fingerprints, fingerprints are off. off. Yeah, so we don't need this briefcase. We are going to go put this book back instead of getting the contact. I don't know how I feel about this. I might have liked to step in and get the real contact here. Because now the DA is gone. Yeah, it could make us look AI-like, but you need that double agent to re-enter conversation at some point in mm -hmm. the next 50 seconds if you want a mission complete. Now, maybe you don't. Maybe you think you gave BB to a lot of people. You just want to wait and hope for a civ shot. Uh, with Bug and Purloin on, you do have opportunities if a Civ shot doesn't come. The double agent does re-enter so many people in conversation, and we might be lining up for a banana bread into a Bug here. But it's a white test. I think the ambassador is going to get pushed out before mm -hmm. we can go for the Bug. That's exactly what happens. I almost wonder if Opie could have credited us for entering. Uh, oh, that, a white Purloin coming up here. But Opie is watching this. He can't highlight us, and we're going to get shot. 
Ooh, we tried to duck. We tried to pick up the briefcase to avoid the bullet. Oh boy, that was close. I wonder if it would have worked to take a bug as we enter that conversation. We entered right next to the Amba, and Obi didn't have a great angle on it. Uh, I, I suspect that he may have been considering credit it anyway. I'm not sure. But it might have worked. I don't know. Well, it's another sniper win. We may have changed venues and gone to a completely different style of game, but we're still seeing the same the sniper win so far. Not a far. different style of outcome. Ooh, Quick contact Opie. here. Yeah, that was a green contact as well while he was already in the middle of his uh, flirt. And Opie thinks that he's going to be able to get away with the soft tell game now. Opie is going to go in for the center inspects and he's banking on the fact that T-Flame doesn't think he's suspicious, right? Because he only spoke once in that conversation. Uh, if you think that he was talking for the banana bread, then it means he wasn't talking for flirt. So if Opie can go in and just hit another green flirt here, he could be done. And Opie yeah. is challenging T Flame to shoot him in that case. Yeah, I think this this might very well. Whoa, no, no, no. Oh, T Flame oh, hates it. T Flame was all on wow. top of him, was able to what shoot shot. for two flirts. What a shot! That was so confident. He was so confident that Opie had finished missions there. That's wild, because I was going to note that uh, Tiefling was really watching Opie's blinks on those statues, and Opie did do the correct blink. Uh, so Tiefling was satisfied with that at the moment, but when he left the conversation, went back to that flirt there. Wow, that was an almost perfect spy game from Opie, to get three missions done that quickly in high rise. I don't think most snipers would have shot that. That was a, that was a masterwork shot by Tiefling. Yeah, it's very hard to shoot for that. Um, the whole benefit of playing that game is that you're challenging the sniper to shoot when they want to wait as long as possible to get mm -hmm. more information. So good on T-Flame for being able to take it. Clearly he was on top of that first talking conversation. Uh, and the fact that the talk was, you know, a BB and a flirt at the same time wasn't enough for him to hold the shot. I wonder what would have happened if Opie had held on to that flirt for much, much longer. We had the time if we wanted to to just idle and not talk for a long time. The problem is, though, that you don't know that you're going to hit that green flirt. So you want to get it done as soon as possible so you know that if you need to hit another flirt, you have enough time to do it. Uh, but I wonder what would have happened. Yeah, but the longer you wait to flirt, the more time the other guests have to be AI-like, which might mean that when you do take the talk, the sniper thinks, yeah, no one else is suspicious, I guess it's them after all. Anyway, T-Flame spying now as Twim. We started off with some inspects over there on the side. We made sure to walk very far away from the ambassador as we passed by him so that we wouldn't be credited with Bug, and now we've got our first flirt. It's funny that uh, we're playing Twin again, and we stepped into the same conversation spot in... in uh... Same spot in conversation that uh, Opie just got shot. So that's kind of funny. Oh, did did T Flame just? I think T Flame just sort of broke animation there uh, while taking odd. the drink. I think it's an attempt to look AI like because there's no reason that the yeah. spy would ever do that. It could also look like maybe you were red flirted in the middle of the take or something like that. I don't know. T-Flame's trying to look AI-like. That's all I know. I've seen AIs do that from time to time, but I I, I tend to kind of ignore it because it could be the spy trying to leave conversation if they take the drink, but just timing it like a half second too early. Uh, yeah, so I don't the other know option is maybe, or... maybe if you got interrupted by someone, then you would stop your talk and then you would take a drink. And if you've been interrupted in the last like five seconds you can walk away at any point. Oh, we try to get a flirt at paintings, but she leans <laughs> Interesting to know that T-Play uh, left that statue really quickly, like hard tell quickly to get to the flirt target at the painting. I don't know if Opie saw it or not. Uh, it was pretty visible to me, but uh, just may not have been paying attention to that. We really want to get that flirt at paintings before she left, but fortunately uh, it paid off. And in the bread. Well, yeah, fake contact indeed. coming off here. It's going to be Ponytail, Kane, and Pearls, who are the ones with real. Uh, yeah. Maybe what Ponytail did, flirting with us at the painting, looked weird, but not enough to provoke a shot or anything just yet. Mm -hmm. We take another path by the Ambassador, but again, not close enough to to bug, and hopefully Opie knows it. Yeah, if we take a real contact here, I don't think it's going to work. We, we Opie definitely knows that we did two inspects, or did two statue visits. Uh, the second BB would look really bad for Twin. I think this will get a shot if we take it. Yeah, but I do think the fake was a good 
a good idea there it because was, generally yeah. if the spy has the inspects done they're not just gonna go into a conversation and risk a fake banana bread mm -hmm. but you clearly have to take risks if you want to win a spy game against opie so yes. i see why he did it wow this contact is awful if we take it there's so many people out we're the we only could... person who would yeah we cannot take this contact we have, it to, try for, to, be... we have to try for a purloin here or it could be a banana bread. No, not with the ambassador at window. Oh, we take the no. banana bread and yeah, OP just lines up the shot. There was an opportunity there. I think in about 20 seconds, there were a lot of people on the move. And I think if we had left and tried to bug the amp, I think it might have worked. Possibly. It's, it was a chance at least. But that contact, I don't think that was going to work. All right. Well, Ugh. Sniper Party is holding. That's OP at five points now. So... I don't know if either player is going to reach seven points and win the set outright. So know. for Opie, if he gets one more point here, he will guarantee the tie. Oh, this ambassador is so tempting over here. Oh. But of course, that means T-Flame is watching it. You cannot get away with a bug. And Opie has been credited with a bug that he did not take. T-Flame wasn't certain if Rocker bugged or not. That's bad news for Opie here. Uh, T-Flame has been guarding the Ampa like a hawk there, but there was a split-second opportunity, I think, where Rocker could have done that bug, and T-Flame would have known, and I think he's nervous about that. Yeah, and the fact that she doesn't even have the bug, oh, now she's entering now conversation talking. right next to someone, and she's talking right away, it just looks like flirting, because yeah. it is. And unfortunately, OP might not think that he's suspicious for bug there he might think the t-flame guarded it well enough and that's that's just really unfortunate because we wouldn't look that bad if we weren't suspected for bug but yeah uh, and even if you're not credited even if you're not credited with the bug it still means that t-flame is going to be watching you really closely from now on because you're a highlight so getting away with other missions is going to be really hard he's going to notice uh if you have real bb or not i don't i don't i don't really see it through here for op the way that T-Flame is, is really sticking to watching the Amba here, I feel like the better way to go would be to try to get some other kind of mission done while T-Flame has to watch the Amba. Like, if we could get a side inspect over at the far window, like, while Amba is standing right here, for instance, it might work. But it's a little bit too late for that now that we're credited with Bug. We might just have to try to get a Bug anyway now. Like, if we left conversation here and did it, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, the good news is the ST came to us and he's not very close, but we still mm -hmm. got a good flirt. So we're at 75%. Yeah. I mean, we can do a standing bug at any time, right? But I don't think T-Flame's ever going to take his eyes off I guess it. We are. I guess we are close enough to do it. We are, we are in a position here. The circles are overlapping, but the Amba's not getting pushed out. So that's a good good possibility for us if we do. We are going to take the... We take it. T-Flame saw it. I think he saw it. It looked like he was about to line up that shot. Uh, I don't know. We we took it while we had a little bit of cover here, and Alice's uh, ponytail was taking a drink. I don't know if T Flame saw it or not. He might not have. I thought I saw a slight laser movement getting ready banana to land in the shop, but then there was no banana bread. Now yeah. there is yes. one. Yes, I think that's it. T Flame was uh, was lining up the shot there. It was a very slight laser movement, but I think he was getting ready to line up a shot, and then he mm. thought, you know what? There hasn't been a contact. I don't need to shoot. Just just hold for now and the problem is that even if t flame did see that bug uh t flame already kind of suspects rocker bugged possibly so i think that contact was just definitely gonna get a shot i don't know i don't know if there was a lot of ways that we could have finished that because inspects perlin probably would have got a shot too yeah Not good a lot discipline of from t flame though yep. um and really good job holding down that bug opie thought i'm gonna go for it he's already been watching it for like over a minute surely he'll have a momentary lapse of 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 watching this at some point but t-flame never did he held on score is now five five there are only two games left in this set and t-flame <laughs> brought down to a low light brought back up to a neutral i think that might have been a misclick like, because yeah. we're between two double agents that's yeah that's exactly what i think happened well, with how this has been going, it's going to be really hard for either player to win both games here. A tie seems like the most likely result. And this is high rise. Like, depending on what the party gives you, you might not have a great opportunity for a spy win. So we'll see what T-Flame is able to do with it. Yeah, we're getting off to a slow start here, but that's okay. You do have a little bit of time to, to idle on high rise. Uh, we are going to want to take this flirt pretty soon, though, I think. And we are going to do it right now. Yeah, and look at this. T-Flame is really trying to get a distance that doesn't look too close to the seduction target, but is still close enough 
for a 50%. And we do hit the green, so we do get it. But the circles very, are not touching. Nice. And ponytail leads. That's that's very, very nice for us. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. If we waited around for a timer flirt, it might be kind of noticeable. It'll be noticeable if Possibly. we join her as well. It's just a question of if Opie is on top of these flirt pairings or not. Mm -hmm. I, I really like this innocent talk. We're not next to anyone that we were next to previously, so it really doesn't look like we're flirting right now. I don't know if Opie tracks that kind of thing, but it, it's something that I look for on high rise because there isn't a whole lot else to watch. So I, I just really like that little innocent talk there. Yeah, and the fact that we're just waiting around in this conversation, it doesn't look like we're chasing a flirt with anyone. Ponytail's gonna go over to Windows. Chasing her here would be too obvious, I think. But uh, T-Flame's gonna, gonna go gonna for it. it. And we do hit another uh, green she checks her watch. before she leaves. Perfect. So the flirt is done now. Okay, was, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. It was possible that she would have left if she didn't check her watch there, but we got a little bit lucky there. We could go for a really nice contact here. If there's a position in that convo, we don't go for it, though. We step in the other conversation, which has the SDA. Yeah, I think we could have fit in there between Smallman and Salmon. Are we going to go for it now? Yes, yeah, slightly weird, non-direct path. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was fine, though. I'm sure it was fine. If we go for a contact now, um, there's a decent number of people. And the end of red. Right. Oh, it's red. Red contact. <laughs> OP sees it. Darn. Oh, that's tragic. I think that game was winnable. So I think so not, too. Like, not a, not a sure thing, but it was within within reason. If we go to inspects or try a bug there, that it might work. Yeah, it was good flirt progress. I thought that going to Windows would be kind of an obvious flirt, but it doesn't look like we were being paid too much know. attention to afterwards. It's hard, hard to say. Yeah, and if we had just done the contact, gone to center statues. I don't know. I still think we might have been shot. Opie is a really good sniper and has really good intuition on this venue. But that's Opie at six points now, which means if Opie gets one more, if he can pull off the spy win, he will just narrowly, narrowly win this set. Or T-Flame can just hold the sniper game as he has been doing, and it'll just end in a tie. Yeah, it's been 11 sniper wins so far, so Opie's going to need to get the first spy win of this set if he wants to win this hex outright. Well, there's a really good bug opportunity here. You start a bug, it becomes your right arm, and then you walk over to the bookcase. Uh, oh, yep, exactly, exactly what he does. <laughs> oh, you called it. I know it... Opie. I know my Opie rights. <laughs> T-Flame was... was definitely watching for it. It's just a question of how how much of that arm was, was visible. slightly visible on Sniper Review, but I don't know if T-Flame saw it or not. It was a, it was a pretty good bug. You can see the arm starting to come out, but if you suspect the bug, oh, this is the bug when you would shoot. Oh might. yeah, highlight on just Kane. It's not highlights for real for the no. entire conversation. It's That's just Kane. He's talking Kane. again. Do you want to shoot him? Considering no. it, but no. I think the T flame probably knows that Kane is not done with flirt yet. I think that the next talk could be very dangerous for Opie. I'm not sure that T flame will shoot, but it's going to be tough to finish flirt here. I think. I think I so, think too, the but there's knows. two minutes for it. There's two minutes for yeah. it. Who are we next to? We're next to Sari. We're next to Wheels. If we talk next to them again, T-Flame could think that's a flirt finish. Opie has yeah. to basically just not talk in this conversation if he doesn't want to die. Yeah, we're also next to General, who is the SDA. Um, but Red Dress is going to come back to this conversation where, where, yeah, the next talk, there it is. T-Flame was ready for it. T-Flame yeah. definitely suspected the bug heavily. Not enough to take an instant shot on banana bread, but enough to shoot for one more talk. Very yeah. good discipline. Again, good call that Kane wasn't done flirting. Mm -hmm. And just fantastic oh, sniper man. play from both of these players. Incredible sniper play on high rise, especially. Uh, those, those last two shots that T-Flame took, especially, were really good. Yeah, and just... he Yeah, he caught... He caught those bugs. He just caught them, and they were not the easiest to guard. Like I said, this no. bug that Opie just did is one of the stronger bugs that you can do on high rise. And there was only a little bit of the arm visible right at the start there, but he got it. He got the bug in conversation. He kept his eyes on that ambassador for so, so long. Yeah, I, I again, I really think that maybe T Flame would have been easier to beat if you go do something while the Amba is in danger. But uh, I, I think that bug that. Opie took would have worked against a lot of players. 
so I, I understand taking that bug. Uh, you, you called it right as it happened, and uh, it wasn't easy to see. So that was a really nice catch by Chief Lane. Yeah, the spy games from these players... Now, I, I do want to note something in case there's anyone watching who isn't as familiar with Spy Party. In a lot of these spy games, it sort of looked like the spies were doing nothing for a long time, uh, especially with how long they spent flirting or doing inspects. Uh, or sometimes they just seemed incredibly tentative and didn't take opportunities when they were available. But these are both really strong sniper players, and when you know that you're playing against a strong sniper, you really know what is or isn't going to work. These spy games were not necessarily the most conventional, and I think if these players were playing against someone with a slightly lower level of game experience, we might have seen bolder spy plays, and we might have seen a higher variance of strategies, but they knew that they wouldn't be able to get away with a lot of straightforward plays, and that's why we saw some interesting decisions. Uh, and they didn't pan out a lot of the time, uh, ever, but that's how you have to play spy against snipers at this level, you know? Yeah, and I think that most of the spies, uh, most of the spy games on high rise were pretty good. Like, like I said, you want to force the sniper to take tough shots, and I think that most of those shots were pretty tough. I think that Opie could have easily won that spy game where he did the inspects and the two flirt really quick, and T Flame yep. just had to take a really, really quality shot to win that game. Uh, so Opie could have easily won that set if Tieflin wasn't uh, didn't have an A plus game there. Yeah, and again, Opie I think maybe could have won uh, the game on Ballroom where he got away with the two microfilm animations, mm -hmm. but he ended with a purloin. Uh, he ended with a purloin instead of inspects. But that's what I'm talking about. It's easy for us to judge it, um, but I think Opie felt that if he went into inspects, he would die, and so he mm -hmm. would rather go with something unconventional. That if it doesn't work, maybe just you know looks a bit embarrassing but all you need in a set like this is one spy win that works so trying unconventional stuff like that is usually a good idea t flame did it as well right on high rise he played that one game where he tried to act super ai like mm -hmm. by doing the leave in the middle of a, a drink take and then sipping twice in a row at windows uh things like that the players were definitely trying a lot of cool things on spy but the snipers held it down very well done yeah absolutely i i don't think that most players would not have sniper partied that set and that so that was like really really high quality sniper play from both players yeah uh and so let's go back and take a look at the tile map there we got a tie on this it's not what either team wanted but i think the stakes were kind of similar for for both teams here yeah there's two purple spots next to this they're not going to be able to get the adjacency bonus there anymore uh meanwhile red has one next to this but there's going to be three more tiles next to this next week. So this whole this whole segment of the map is now quite quite split. It's not going to be the number one destination for either team. That whole spot to the left there, to the left of this tile is mm -hmm. full of red. That's going to be oh, yeah. that's going to be a big area for the red team. Uh whereas for, for the sure. purple team, they might be able to get a little bit more around here. Uh they'll get some to the south for sure. That's going to be their focus. Uh, but sort of the area to the upper right of this tile, um, it's not flashing anymore, but it's the one over there on the on the left side with the tie. So the area to the upper right of it is going to be okay for purple, but might not be their their highest priority. Yeah, I think that this tie hurts purple a little bit more than it hurts red. So I, I think that that uh, red team got a little bit more value out of this tie, just a little bit. Yeah, I think so as well. If you look at the little tile just to the right of it, it's flashing now. Um, that that's still going to be a pretty good spot for purple. It mm -hmm. would have been better if they um, if they got the win here. But I don't know. I don't know if red is going to really want to invest on taking that single isolated tile to the right of this. Yeah, I don't know. Probably not. Uh, it depends. I mean, the strategy is really interesting going into next week, right? Because the teams are going to have to decide, do we want to assign strong players to somewhere where we can get a huge amount of adjacency bonus, or do we want to stop the other team from getting it? Like, stopping mm. purple from getting that tile could still be strong, but is yeah. it stronger than getting something in the middle of your big red landmass? Right, especially with purple, I believe, being the third place team right now. I believe that red is has a narrow advantage over green and purple's a little bit behind, if I'm recalling correctly. So, yeah, that's about where the scores are at. So you may 
not we may want to consider giving up that tile i don't know it's hard to say yeah i'm speaking as a caster right now mm -hmm. i'm on so the I. red team and i'm sure there will be my actual tragedy thoughts you know i'll i'll save that for the uh private chats but i think i'm saying some pretty basic stuff i'm not giving anything away i'm like yeah, yeah tile in absolutely. the middle of lots of red is good for red mm -hmm. so yeah all yeah. right i think that's it um thank you for casting with me yes thank you Amy, for having me on and thanks to Lino for creating all of these assets and for hosting. Thank you to T-Flame and Opie. That was a really well-played set. Uh, sniper party sets, you know, if you look at the score line, it's just like, oh, the sniper one every time. That doesn't seem interesting. But when you actually see it happen and you see mm -hmm. the snipers consistently playing so well, I think it's always, always a delight to see. I agree. I think that was a really exciting set. A sniper party can be boring if the spies just aren't playing very well. And the snipers are just having the wins handed to them, but that wasn't the case at all. There's a lot of tense shots in that set. Yeah. All right. Well, if you're interested, this is Spy Party. You can check it out at spyparty.com or on Steam Early Access. You can join the Discord at discord.gg slash spyparty if you want to interact with the community uh, and just learn about more streams happening in the future. And with that, we will say good night. See you, everyone.